Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is another day God has given us. We praise him and praise his name. That is the Psalms. The Psalms yes. is one of my favorite, favorite books in the Bible. When I was growing up, my grandfather, who started the church in our family, in our village, would make us recite recite scriptures every week coming to the Sabbath and service. And Psalms were my favorites and still my favorites. So when I open up with this, ladies and gentlemen, I mean it. This is TJK Shares, TJK Channel. This is a place we bring you ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world. Today, I am so excited to bring Masse, K. Kinogisho to you. Masi and I have been trying to do this interview for many, many, many months, but by God's grace, we all know his timing is not our timing. This is the day. Welcome, my sister, to this channel. Thank you for making time to speak with us. Our listeners are from all over the world, but mostly they are young people, young people who look up to you and look up to me and say, God must have created Mercy and dropped her to do what she does. And through these <laughs> conversations, we are trying to let them know that, no, we are ordinary people, blessed and privileged to be where we are, and anybody can do it. Welcome. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Jackson. Indeed, I'm happy to be here after making arrangements for quite a long time and due to our busy schedules. But like you said, God's timing is, is the right timing. This is the timing that he had made for us. Yes, and you spoke about the Psalms and it reminded me of how I used to compose songs from Psalms in school. I was uh, in charge of scripture union, I was in the school choir and I used to, Psalms was uh, easy for me to compose uh, songs. Anyway, uh, my name is Marcy uh, Chomgashoke Inogwisho. I am um, a, 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 a Ugandan female advocate of sound mind. And uh, I, uh, I serve the government of Uganda. But I'm also a mother of uh, three uh, biological wonderful children. Uh, I, I am a wife to um, Chigaman. <laughs> I am a, I, I am a daughter to, to, to my parents. I'm a daughter-in-law, I'm a sister-in-law. I am a, a, a worker, I am, I am uh, I'm a business person and I'm happy to be here. Uh, by practice, I, I am a lawyer and uh, specifically an intellectual property and business law uh, specialist. And currently, I serve in the government of Uganda as the Registrar General, the uh, official receiver, the accounting officer, or the chief executive of Uganda Registration Services Bureau, a government uh, agency that is charged with registration of uh, a number of uh, registrations that include uh, businesses, intellectual property, uh, among many. Wonderful. Uh, yes. Simply that. Yeah, thank you. We, we, whenever we get an opportunity to speak to somebody like you, we always want to know how you grew up. You talk about being a daughter. Yes, amazing. Thank you. Mom and dad raised you. What was it like as a child growing up in the hands of mom and dad? and a little bit about your siblings. Well, uh, it, it's so amazing that, uh, uh, Jackson, I, I, I thank God for my family. And indeed, if uh, well, God asked me and not, gave me another opportunity to ask for which family to be born into, I would ask for my own family because that's the family I know, that's the family I appreciate. Yes, I was raised in a, in a family of uh, uh, my father, with uh, two wives. Uh, my father had two wives and uh, 14 children. 
Uh, my stepmother had seven children. My mother had seven children. And usually when I tell people uh, I was I was born and raised in a polygamous family, mm. uh, some want me to edit and cut out that. So why, why are you embarrassing yourself? Why are you? Uh, that is not proper. I, I mean, that is me. And and why I, 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 I share it because of the governance that I saw in the family. Mm. That even when I grew up, uh, in a polygamous family where my father had two wives, I'd never seen my mother and my stepmother fight or fight over anything. Wow. These were partners. They respected one another. They visited one another. My stepmother would come to my mother's bedroom in the morning, say, how are you? My father, I mean, we were neighbors. We are still neighbors. My siblings, sometimes it's very difficult to tell who my stepsisters are, who my stepbrothers are. But it all is because of uh, my father's governance style. He, yeah. he was a good leader. He was a good manager that he loved us all and tried to balance. I know it's, it's sometimes hard to balance. Yeah. And we never lacked. We never lacked, even up to now. We, I, we, we, we are together as a family. He, he, he died three years ago. May his soul rest in peace. My stepmother also died about uh, eight years ago. May her soul rest in peace. But you will... We, we manage as a family, every family has its own challenges, like any normal family, even owned by the same mother, same father. But I believe that as a polygamous family in an African setting, we are doing well because of the foundation that our father gave us. Loving one another, respecting one another, like I mentioned, uh, to the extent that <clears throat> my mother and stepmother <clears throat> would be laying strategy on how to manage my dad. There have been meetings uh, now. Uh, how do we manage him on this? How do we handle this? Or oh, they are going for functions. My father would go with both of them. And you'd find them agreeing. What color are you putting on? Maybe we put on our maroon attires. Yeah. We put on our green attires. We, and you find, you don't know how this man did it. And for us, because we never saw war, we never saw fights, we never saw quarrels, we never saw uh disrespect we grew up with those values that you can have an entity you can have a family but respect boundaries respect boundaries as children we we know we we knew what our parents stood for and what they stand for and and we had to fulfill it and follow so I, that's the kind of family that uh, wow. but it was also a business family yes that uh, my parents operated businesses. Uh, my father had uh, discotheques. Uh, actually, my father's discotheque was the largest uh, at one time in East East Africa. And uh, he had uh, cinema halls, he had bars, he had hotels, but he also had a farm, a farm which is still uh, active. But uh, he also ventured into entertainment, having uh, been a successful tailor he was a tailor. He did uh, because he grew up in a poor family where he suffered at the hands of uh, the stepmother and left their home and went to be trained by Indians uh, in a place in Bushen in Chizova, Igara. And uh, at a young age, about 12 or 13 years, he was successful and he migrated to Mbarara uh, and uh, set up a business there. And before when he knew it, he the word was spreading that there's a young tailor who is has integrity, who is thorough. And before he knew it, or government agencies or government ministries, hospitals, private sector, the the uh, brides and grooms parting, he made uniforms for everybody, gowns, uh, suits, and from that money, from that wealth, he 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 invested in entertainment. Mm. He visited entertainment by building a, a discotheque, by building bars, hotels, and his home. He actually tells us that he first built his business empire before he built his home because he didn't want to sleep uh, in a posh house without knowing what the future really? would be Probably. in terms of uh, income streams. Mm. So that is the setting. And in fact, many people would mock us. As, as, as the Kano wishes that even at school, they would mock us. How can you... Be raised in a discotheque. A discotheque was seen as 
the most are seen yes, and, yes. and 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 who are judged but 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 that was business that was my parents business okay. and we worked in those businesses uh, especially the bar would be at the counter hold uh doing procurement at the age at a very young age of 10 i would procure i would go to a shop get uh you no, know, the beers to procure. You no, know, the the the, all, uh, the water to uh, that time there was even no bottled water yet. I mean, all these things, the sodas to procure, the the accountability, recording. So I learned procurement. I learned um, accountability. I learned integrity. I learned timekeeping because it would be early in the morning. So that's how my childhood was, brought up in wow. uh, a family. Which was wealthy, by the way. Many poor have stories. I grew up in a, a, a poor family, made it, but it was wealthy. We had it all. Absolutely. I saw money. Yeah. I saw money at a young age. A lot of money. I, I my pocket money sometimes I pay tuition, school fees from for my schoolmates in in secondary school because I felt I I, I saw it all. And 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 my parents, especially my father, would tell us, my children have made this money, it is mine, make your own. If you want to make your own, study hard. And we were motivated to study hard. But also would say, I he went through a lot of poverty, a mm. lot of suffering, yeah. and he dropped out of school at a young age without a biological mother, mm. with a father who had married uh, a few more women, and he said, I saw poverty, my children. I don't, I hate poverty. If there's any fear in this that I have in this world, it's going back to poverty. So yes. he safeguarded his empire, he safeguarded his wealth. So every time he told us that, because he didn't know about poverty, we fear to, we fear <laughs> to, 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 to work so hard that we don't face it. So <laughs> I and here we are. You know that's my background, and my parents, my mothers operated these businesses. We we all were part of the business the empire, and 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 here we are. You know, I was going to ask you who influenced you and imparted the values you have that have brought you this prominent lawyer, leading the biggest and coolest and the most technologically advanced unit of the government that I know of. But now you have answered that. You have far yes. experience. You are master yes. of cooperation. And yes. I've said this at Harvard uh, in one of the classes mm -hmm. we were talking about values and philanthropy. And somebody said, Jackson, who mm -hmm. taught you to be philanthropic? And I said, mm -hmm. my father was married to five women. Six. Yes. And they all looked like, huh? <laughs> I have to remember in our culture, at the time of my grandfather, he was begged to take on more wives. His wives were begging him to take on more because That's... at the time it was a sign of respect. Labor, shared labor. Helping another family get the dower so they yes. can jump that. So thank you for bringing this up and for our Christian community out there who continue to criticize mm -hmm. people like Masse or myself mm -hmm. because we had mm -hmm. them as family members. Please, yes. The Bible says, you know, I'll, I'll... the Bible says, before you go out to pick a dot from somebody's eye, look in your own eye that has the biggest. This was the culture. These are people who work mm. together and they shaped who we are. We should not be ashamed about it. Go ahead. You're going to make a point. So true. Indeed, uh, indeed uh, sometimes we'd go to church and you find they're preaching against my father. You'd find the, the preachers, uh, hold, uh, you, you know, the whole someone is referring to my father's bar, my father's uh, discotheque. Yes. Or dance hall, uh, uh, you know, and and we never used to drink alcohol, by the way, because we were so aligned. We were well, so because I tell people I don't drink because we saw people drink and maybe mess up. But even my my mother, because she was managing one of the bars and 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 hotels, she used to regulate if you're under eighteen, you don't come in. She 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 she, she this principled women who would not allow, so they would put them, their, themselves in the shoes of the parents of those children. You know, chase away those children. They have the values. We never drank, we never served, but we were in the financial 
uh, in, in, in the Department of Finance, the Department of Procure Procurement. And indeed, you asked about the value, yeah. value system. Many people have asked me, who is your mentor? Yes. I'm telling you, my parents are my mentors. Amen. They they mentored me, let me speak for myself and my siblings, right from childhood because we had a value system at home. You had to wake up early. We had all the shamba boys. We had all the maids. Actually, I never called the maids, the helpers. Yeah. Actually, for them, they were like bosses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their work, their job description was to monitor where the children are, the children out of danger. They can't, you, you shouldn't stray. They should just to watch. But we had schedules on preparing breakfast uh, before we went to school because we were in day school for, for primary school. Mm -hmm. We washed our own clothes. And that is something I put in my children. You get to primary three, primary two, start washing your own clothes. Cooking skills, uh, cleaning up, decorating. I was in charge of decorating Christmas, every function. It's no wonder that I'm into interior designing because I started it at a young age. Every yeah. child had their own uh, own cutout responsibility. So they put all those values in us. We would not miss church. Church was mandatory. Mm. Church was mandatory. Yes. Going to church was mandatory. As uh, uh, and, and integrity because we were working in money. Yeah. In, in in a financial uh, you know se se sector and and whenever they gave us money they gave me money to go and procure uh sodas water wines and so on i had to record and bring balance and receipts Do you know up to now every time i give people money even my house assistants even my well, i say please bring a receipt and balance it is if you <laughs> if you want to work with me jackson yes and i give you my money please come with a receipt and balance even if it is one cent, come with it. It is from it. that that I will trust you and reward you. Otherwise, never actually, if anyone ever gave you money, account. So accountability. I knew accountability right from the start. I knew integrity. My father, many a times would, our, our, our house helps, our farm, our, 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 our shamba boys, our drivers stayed up to now for 30 years. They're still working at home mm. because of the kind of environment that they they got used to, but also he would he would take them through an interview. Or uh, he gives you a shirt to wash and puts like some money in intentionally. Even yeah. us as children, okay, wash for me. Hey, Masi, wash for me this. Oh, say, oh, Tata, Tata, you you left in uh, five well, five hundred shillings. Oh. Then for him it was a test. So mm -hmm. I I can let me tell you, Jackson, I can never steal. Mm -hmm. I will never steal. I've never stolen. I can never pick anyone's money. Never. It's not me. It's not. It, and it will never be. So I find it so hard. I tell people that wherever I go, I sleep. Even in my house, I sleep because I know nobody will knock at my door saying, I gave you my iron sheets. Uh -oh. Or you stole my cement. You stole my what? Nothing. And even my father will tell us uh, after, he will tell us, my children have gone to sleep every night. I've gone to sleep. I'm in my bed. Let nobody wake me up because I don't have any loan. Of course, that's the time he had finished investing and what. Uh, there's nobody that demands anything from me, money or anything. So let me, I'll wake up when my body wakes up. That's so, true. and even now when we are with siblings on my family chats, we say, okay, if I'm going to sleep, nobody, even when I have a loan for us, we, are, we edit it. <laughs> At least nobody, let nobody I disturb me. So the family system pay, is built in homes. That, There's that, no shortcut, Jackson. There's no shortcut. <laughs> because I have seen so many parents blame, we blame teachers, we blame schools, we blame universities. Mm -hmm. Because of our children's character. But you as a parent, Learn you had the first seed. Yes. You had those seeds that you should have planted. So we should never blame anyone for the wrongs of my children. Even now, I think, how will my children make good wives, maybe good husbands? Will my children make good uh, 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 workers? I keep asking that question. And I go back to the value system. Have I done the best I haven't given them the best. I have tried to use my parents' model. They, they, my, my husband, their father is also so strict on values. So we try to replicate. We say, if I got values from this 
family. Why should I not put the same values in my own family for my children to secure my children in future? Exactly. And, and you know, Masi, when um, several questions I was going to, several questions that were going to lead our conversation is how do you incorporate values that you were raised around into your professional life? Tick. Can you share a fond memory from your childhood that is still influences your decisions today? Tick. Yes. Are any specific family achievements that you're particularly proud of that you have, dri have driven you to excel in your own career? You've answered that. Let me yes. go back to sleeping well at night. Uh, <laughs> every picture of you I've seen I've been to your office. We've met here at Harvard University. You are always dressed to the T. And now yes. I know the answer comes from you are that being a tailor. I mean, those yes. who you can see her right now, how she's dressed, how she's putting on together, something that does. Yes. Build. Now, yes, yes. My my father is uh, was was a tailor, a designer. It is natural. We are also all uh, all the children are all designers. We are florists. We are into interior designing. We have that talent. In fact, uh, at home we believe that any any of us that does not know how to design, that mm -hmm. is not smart and doesn't know how to dance, is not my father's child. <laughs> not you don't need a DNA. That's you don't the need DNA. The DNA. <laughs> yes, that's the DNA. And we all love uh, good environments. We yeah. clean up. We beautify our environments, especially flowers. So we get it from our, our, our father because he was a designer and he was always the smartest person. And he made the smartest uniforms for those that went to Mbarra High School in Tare, uh, the, the prisons, he made uniforms for prisons, he made uniforms for, for hospitals, nice gowns, suits and all that. But beyond that, our mothers, our mm. mothers were and are the neatest women that I've seen. My stepmother, very neat. She was very neat. Very, very neat. Mm. My mother, very neat, very neat, very smart. She will never repeat her cloth. Uh, and I find it even up to now for somebody to read, re, you know, put on the same attire they put on, you know, the previous day. I would, I, 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 I uh, those are some of the things that I learned. But also mm. the fact that um, I, I think it was, uh, at, of course, my mother, people would say, oh, our mothers are the smartest women, smartest women. And and uh, to the extent that they never put on even these secondhand clothes, they believed in. Of course, you can't be a, a wife of a, of, of a tailor, a designer, and you, you know, is uh, just back from our roots. Exactly. All of us, all yeah. of us, all my, all my siblings love smartness. So, but there are others that are even better than me because they pay attention to detail. Have my sister called patients for her. Invite her for a function at your own peril. From the top to the, she will, everything will match. So sometimes you have to warn her not to be smarter than the bride <laughs> when she's going for a function. So it's part of us. I love being smart. I love color. I love uh, beautiful spaces. I love uh, being clean, I love clean environments. In fact, uh, even uh, through that, I became the Minister of Environment and Health. I became a head girl. I've, I've been a leader from right from childhood. Oh, and yeah. even if I came, to, to, I found in an environment and I found uh, any litter, I would tell you, I would say, can I remove it all, ask people to clean up. I can come to a place, somebody's house, and I tell them to clean. Can you imagine? I start, I said, no, no, this is dirty. Can you please, can you treat, you know, I, and I do it politely. Yeah. I try to get the woman aside or somebody in charge and say, can you please improve this or somebody's office? So I I I I I am obsessed with we're obsessed with cleanliness and smartness. Wonderful. Not only physically, but also, also mentally. mentally and emotionally. Yeah. Masi, as Registrar General at Uganda Registration Services Bureau, uh, USB in short, you lead so many departments that touch people's daily lives. From the smallest, sure. and you've changed this. Your predecessor, Nelson, is a good friend of mine also, who is now mm. went on to do ARIPO. How talk a little bit of 
how you have maximized technology. Many years ago, to register a company in Uganda, it take you math and math. You have changed this to get on your phone, go to the link, pa 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 pa. Within few hours, you are done registering. How have you taken a this whole process of months and months and squeezed it into minutes. Thank you very much. That's a very, very uh, uh, interesting question. But before I go to URSB, will you permit me to conclude the family part? Yes, please. Yes. That, uh, yes, yes. I, I talked about the family I am raised in and I'm born in. But many a times we forget that there are other families. There's a family you're married into. The families that we marry into also shape us. That's true. Because at the end of the day, our parents raise us up to the 20s, uh, up to the age we get married. And they hand us over to the families that we get married into, which are the identities of our children. That's true. So I also thank God for the family that I married into. A, a, a very good family, very respectful. And uh, I, I, my, my children have been raised in that family in a very good way, religious a lot of religion, a lot of uh, teaching, a lot of toughness, a lot of uh, love, mm -hmm. because they welcome us. They will, you know, when you're not born in a family and you stay uh, forever there and, and they raise your children. So that's another family that nurtures us. Sometimes we forget it. Then there's also a family of the religion, the church, the churches that we go to, the mosques that we go to. Let me use the faith-based uh, families. Yeah. Uh, uh, so they also contribute a lot to what we are. Uh, maybe also the social family, which you're also good at, the, the projects that you're doing, the yeah. people that you have gathered, the community that, that you have developed in Nyaka, I mean, the same, the Rotary family, all these families also contribute a lot to what we are in our adult age. Uh, so uh, I feel that we should also recognize those families Yes. That is not only our biological family, but also the families we marry into, or the families that marry us, yes. the families that we worship with, the families that we what we we serve with yes. in the community, mm -hmm. but also lastly the work family. Yes, yes, because we work, we work, we work, we spend our whole time in the workspace, or businesses, that all projects that we run. So those families also matter a lot. And so talking about the work family leads me also now to your question. Yes. Uganda Registration Services Bureau, which is my work family. That's your work. An institution that I am proud to, to lead. Yes, we have done a lot of uh, transformation, but we we build from the successes of the past leaders because mm -hmm. this, this institution was there and we found a good foundation Mm. by the past leaders. And I take this opportunity to appreciate the past leaders, all the past registrar generals. Yes. We honor them. They led at different times with different seasons, different challenges. That's true, yes. And they did what they did and handed over. So I also took on from where the former registrar general left. Yes. Laid foundation in terms of human capacity building, laid foundation in terms of digitization, laid foundation in terms of automation, laid foundation in terms of visibility, laid foundation in terms of stakeholder management and partnerships, among others. And I also took the really, I said, what do we do? You look at the priorities of government under the National Development Plan, mm. and the government has been pushing for digital the digital transformation, the digital governance. And this is why we found ourselves digitizing all the documents, yes. concluding the projects that had been started by the previous leaders, setting up, because you start by digitizing all the documents that you, you register, because as Uganda Registration Services Bureau, we are charged with the registration of companies, right. uh, business names, partnerships, uh, uh, chattels, uh, trademarks, those intellectual property, uh, patents, copyright, civil registrations, insolvency, to mention but a few. We host over 30 registers. And this 
when you are registration services bureau, it means you register. Your work is to register stamp yes. store stamp. and keep it for use by the public, by government, by the private sector. And so we had all these documents that we digitized, that everything now, all documents are 100% digitized. But after digitization, we said, now that we have all these documents in digital format, yes. we need to put online systems. We started with an internal system of registration, which was actually had been there for the last five years, but it was internal. And then we said, okay, now that we have internal, let's open it up to the public. Mm. And then we worked with the different ministries, departments and agencies, the private sector, to get an online business registration system, a trademark registration system, and so on. And now a business that used to take three days or seven days takes an hour to oh, three hours, depending on the bulk. Yes. Most of them are instant. Documents, legal documents that we register are instant. So it's a matter of getting online, opening an account within our system, mm -hmm. logging onto our system, uploading the necessary documents, the applications which are available in a format that is recommended by our system. The protocols are online. Then you put your identification documents, our pay, the requisite fees, because there's an online payment system, because we are agents of Uganda Revenue Authority. Yeah. So all the money that is paid goes to Uganda Revenue Authority. And you can pay via mobile money. You can use your visa to pay. You can go to work into any bank. You can do online transactions. And as soon as you, you're done, you'll get notifications. You'll also get notifications. And then in the back end, we process these documents. You get your certificate in time. You get acknowledgement. You get the receipts in time. So that is a big achievement that we have registered. The fact that you can register a business in an hour or two. We are looking at instant registration mm -hmm. as we try to enhance the system, but also manage the, 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 the backlog. The, there's a lot of applications that come in on a daily. And now it is possible for anyone to register business from any part of the world, anytime, 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 a time, anytime, a... even when uh, in Uganda, this time it's, it's about 7.30, it's coming to 8 o'clock. In the US, it is still day. You can register, you can apply and, and get your certificate registered. So those are some of the achievements that we have done in terms of digitization, automation, in terms of uh, the digital revolution or governance, uh, as well as uh, the human capacity. We have met your a family oriented institution that we treasure people that work with your We believe that a person come, hum, comes from a home, a, a family setting, and should also work in a family setting. If you're not fine, you don't have to come to work. Send an email, a, a communication to your super. Send an email to your supervisor. You, you, yes, okay. at least there there should be there should be some communication because you're accountable to you. We are accountable to you. You're accountable to us. And so there are models of even remote working. We have uh, stationed uh, ICT tools within people's homes that if you decided not to come to work this whole week or this whole month, just communicate that you'll be remote working. For us, we have all tools to assess that you're working. We can get online and know how many companies you have registered, how many trademarks you have registered, how many letters you have responded to, how many clients you have worked with or supported. Have to so all the, as long as you have the proper systems in place, perfect. you can work from anywhere. So, Master, when you look at your position and the years you've spent in it, working as registrar general, what's the most rewarding part? You personally, what's the most rewarding part of your job? Yes, I have been registered general. I can count three years now because uh, 22nd December is soon. I was appointed on 22nd December, three years ago. And um, it's it's not easy. It hasn't been smooth. Yes. You know, uh, leadership, you start by 
you know, like you're going to drive a car, you first warm it up, you uh, start in gear number one for a manual car, then you see uh, the terrain, you see how it is, then it, for automatic, it will demand the gear. But for, 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 for the manual, you will know when to put gear number two. Yes. <laughs> then you accelerate. Then you know when to put gear number three. You know how you will, you will know and you'll see the signals. And I must say that the stack wasn't easy because there's issues of acceptability, there's issues of change management, there's, there are issues of leadership styles because every leader has their own style and model. That's right. So um, I must say that uh, one of the things that I am particularly proud of is uh, making the colleagues, my colleagues, the human resource, appreciate that we count on them, we appreciate them, first of all, we are here for them. Yes. Without them, the institution cannot move. Even all these electronic systems and digitized systems cannot move without human beings. Yes. Without them, our country will be, uh, 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 the services in our sector will be affected. That's so true. I prioritize the people, mm. the people that serve within Uganda Registration Services Bureau. I respect them. We train them. We build capacity. We give them opportunities to lead. We give them opportunities to chair meetings. We give them opportunities to be on the committees and doesn't matter. And we res because we uh, disrespecting people it is not allowed because mm. we can have disagreements, my brother Jackson. Yes. We can disagree on points, on points. I mean, we, we don't have to agree. But we can respect one another and we don't shouldn't take things personal because at the end of the day, we are here in URSB and tomorrow will be somewhere else. And I always uh, uh, make fun with my colleague. I say that today I may be your, your leader, but tomorrow you may give you, you may be an in-law to, to my son. Exactly. I might marry your daughter. <laughs> my, I mean, my, my son might marry your daughter. Yes. Or your son might marry my daughter. So this is how the world turns around. So we should not treat people mm. as if they are less human beings. We should not forget the humanity part of ourselves and think that we are regulating robots who don't mm. fall sick, who are not supposed to go and live, who are not supposed to explain themselves, who are not supposed to feel free. Feel free. I always want people to feel free. Call me mercy. If I find you dancing in office, just call you. I'll join you in the dance. If I find you <laughs> chilling and happy, let me join you. But don't see me and run away and pretend. Yes. Others will be raising a generation of pretenders. So that's one thing that I am proud of because when you set that foundation of people and their mindset, the rest can follow. So if somebody wanted an advice. Maybe the next one is having to move people to uh, the building. We, we are in our own home. Mm. And historically, this is a building that was set up. The journey started five years ago. And, but you know, it may have a structure put in place, but moving from your rented premises, that structure takes a lot. People think it is obvious. Uh, no. She, moving <laughs> moving is not, first of all, handling, the, monitoring the finishes of that building, the home. Then moving, moving comes with a lot of clearances here and the occupational permits. Uh, uh, the landlord wants their balance. So you have to prepare the staff to, to move. You have to get a moving company. You, you, you're not only moving physically, but also emotionally. That's right. You have to move. So managing that transition That's hard. was also a big achievement. And every time we are in a new building, on the fifth, sixth, seventh floor, we are like, oh my God, if, uh, is this our home? So uh, that's another achievement good. that uh, I, I really celebrate. Thank you. Very good. You are full-time mother. You are a full-time registrar general. You are an amazing volunteer and fellow Rotarian. Uh, mm -hmm. so give to the community through Rotary, you give the community through church, you are an active person, you are writing a book, you are taking more classes. Please talk to mothers who are listening to us right now on how to balance all these different things that makes you, you, you have done so well. I actually many times wonder 
how does Nasa do this? And I'm not a mother. I'm not a woman. <laughs> Share with us. Thank you, um, Jackson. <laughs> Many people have asked me that question on how to balance, how I balance yes. my, my, my family life, my work life, my charity life, my academic life, all these, you know, our lives. But my, my stand has always been that it's not it's it's not it's it's not about balancing because I don't believe that these things are balanced. One has to suffer. Yes. I believe mathematically, if you're to balance anything, you put it on any weighing scale, it has to be allotted the same time, the same attention, the same effort, and so on, it's which is practically question. impossible. How it's not possible at all. Yeah. So what I do, um, what I do is uh, I, I I create boundaries. Are um, uh, 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 boundaries, and this is how I categorize them. And in fact, I found even an explain uh, a further explanation in, in some book that I, I read. Uh, I've just finished reading. I I I, I was happy that the, the author had the same mindset that I have. I, I believe that uh, the life is made of different bound buckets. Let me call them buckets. Uh, because I love giving buckets, bucket gifts. So let me call it bu buckets. I believe that in life you have a family bucket. Mm -hmm. The family bucket has the biological family, you are a daughter, you are a wife, you are a mother, you are a, work, a worker, you are a, a member, a leader in church or a mosque, you are a social worker in terms of rotary charity and so on. That's one bucket. When it comes to a family bucket, you give time to the family, especially the biological family. How are your children? How are you raising them? How is how are you attending to your spouse and so on? Are they on board? How are you uh, supporting the family or working with the family that marries you, that you're married into? How are you work, attending to the work family? How are you uh, attending to the church family and so on? Then that's one bucket. And it comes with so many responsibilities. Uh, once you appreciate that that is a bucket on its own, you know how to integrate your schedules within. You know that in the morning, I have to take my children to school, I have to attend to my husband, I have to do what or weekends, uh, specifically for family, I have to attend to my in-laws, I have to attend to my parents, I have to attend to all that. So you set your schedule. Then there's also that bucket of work or I, I uh, that has work knowledge and skills. Uh, the skills that you have, uh, are you still adding skills? Are you going back to school for skill more skills? Are you what knowledge do you have? Do you read? Do you read books? Like I read books every month. I'm reading. I read books. I read books. I'm always reading every 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 time I have a book that I'm reading. I don't know there are people who don't read, but I, but they use their time. To do other things, maybe to do farming, to do, uh, to go out for a social hour. So that's another bucket. When it's time for reading, for studying, for learning, for trainings, mm -hmm. you also have to create that time. That's another bucket. So that's another boundary. Then the the, the social life, the networks that you have in Rotary, in 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 church, in in school, in in your in in your category of CEOs. Or directors or managers, who do you know? Did, where do you go to, to, to find these networks? How do you enhance them? And who is in your circle? That's another boundary yes. of networks because you can't live alone in your biological family bucket and you think life will continue. You can't live alone in that work space bucket that you work from six to, to, to midnight. That is, I don't, I don't agree with people who work till late. That's unless, true. unless, unless. But when do you socialize? When do you attend to your family? When do you, or if you don't have a family, when do you create the mood for creating that family or position yourself where you can think about creating a family? So the bucket of networks is important. Then there's that bucket of resources where you have to make money. How are your income streams? What businesses do you have? What do you have on your accounts? Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, I have uh, one of uh, the spiritual mentors, uh, architect Apostle Moses Mukisauris, uh, says your income streams, what is your financial thermostat? Mm -hmm. 
That's what okay. do you have on your account? What, what what are you saving? Very, very interesting model, erotic and a very good. Yeah. Yes. So where are your resources? The financial resources, even the physical assets, where are they? Uh, that's another boundary. That's another bucket to think about. Then your reputation, maybe as you do this, mind your reputation. What are you known for? If I'm to ask, oh, my brother Jackson uh, uh, Kaguri, uh, oh, yes, he's smart, he's done great, very good reputation. Because the reputation ha can also kill all those efforts that we have made. That's so I, I think for me, instead of work and life balance, it's about buckets. Uh, creating boundaries in these buckets of life that we have because we have responsibilities everywhere. So when it comes to family, I am the best family person, best mother, best yeah. what? In the kitchen, I am the best cook. Catch yeah. me there. Then on the dance floor, I am the best dancer. <laughs> In the networking, I'm the... So, uh, you, 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 you see how life yeah. is. You just create boundaries that when it's time for this, it's time for this, like Sundays. I really want to dedicate them, yes, prayer, but also attending to my family. You mm. know, in this in this kind of uh, space that we are in, that I serve in, I mean, people, some people will not care whether you have a family or not. They'll call you on a Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Yeah. They want to know the procedure of registering a company. They want to know the, <laughs> the fees payable. <laughs> and, you know, as a leader, you're like, okay, I do appreciate uh, uh uh, please check our website if you can. Or I ask uh, uh, our PR person to call them because I'm also busy in prayer or, or attending to a family issue. Because otherwise, if we don't take that bit of break, uh, you 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 don't you don't you you don't serve the other parties. Yet uh, somehow somewhere, I mean, the family matters a lot, but also the work matters a lot. But you have to see how to create boundaries. So sometimes I I, I always encourage people, please, you create a boundary you, unless you are abroad and the time. The time zones are different. But when in Uganda, you want to call me at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning asking for the procedure of registering a company. Oh, I'm stressing with my family. I am, you know, at least let, let's create those boundaries. Sometimes I am frank about it, but there are those. Uh, but still, we have to handle. We I see how to handle the clans. But clans do not understand that sometimes we need those boundaries boundaries so yes yes talk about the bucket of relaxation how does mercy relax i know you dance you sing you go to church which part relaxes you more than any other <laughs> thank you very much and i like the mode of buckets um the bucket of relaxing is very key because even as we grow older mm -hmm. my brother jackson that's you us. realize that you need to get on a on or, or, or we need to get on a golf course. We yeah. need to go to the gym. We need to go to the sauna and massage. We need to to do things that are we need to tone down actually. Now that as is, we age, as we, we need to tone, that's what I've learned. Because I was born very energetic. I have a lot of energy. Even yeah. when I try to speak softly. I can't. This morning I was <laughs> chatting with some friends. I was like, even when I try to be calm, I, 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 I don't know. I try. It's a different personality. Okay. I have a lot of energy. I have, but I know in future when I grow, I am still growing. You turn down. I've seen old people because I've seen people in retirement. Mm -hmm. I met so many people who are seniors. When we were in school, they had all this energy. They were in big offices. They were, they were, they had the vibe. Yes. But now they are slow. They are, they have toned down. They are on walking sticks. They are. So it has just awakened me because I, I, and reminded me that hey, even as I run about in my family life, in my private life, in my work life, in whatever life, I need to think about me. Now the relaxation bucket should have. First of all, how is your mindset? How is your mental? How is your mental state? Mental first. Yes. Why? What? What is? What are you uh, uh, uploading within your mental system? Mm. What? Uh, what accounts have you opened within within your mind? 
You know, people have so many different accounts. The account of hate. Jackson, Jackson, you might find you, you, you are an account, you have an account in somebody's head. And the person has a list of all the bad deeds that you did to them. Yes. And every time this person sees you, they feel like they recharge like hitting you. <laughs> so I tell people, just, just delete, control, delete, reset. Don't store those things that will make you old. They make you age. So the relaxation also helps you to uh, clear that, to delete whatever garbage that is in your mind. Mm -hmm. Learn to forgive. Learn to forgive. It's good for your emotion. If you can't do it for the sake of the person that has offended you, do it for yourself as therapy. It's therapy. Wow. Just forgive because every time you don't forgive that person and you meet that person is in a better car, in a better space, and they offended you, or you will get... You continue getting all that bitterness within you and the toxicity, toxic. Your body becomes toxic. So just do it for your therapy. So with relaxation, I read books. I listen to music. I have my own me time. I love uh, setting myself apart. I sit like on a couch and, and just think and do my own version of yoga. Think about what I've achieved. I thank God. I I, I I I have my quiet times that I pray to my God because at the end of the day, he's the creator. Right. Mm. And he's the one that provides. So in whatever bucket that you have, in whatever busy schedule that you have, learn to create that relaxation bucket and see what can fit in. And don't overcrowd the buckets, otherwise you will not. Because I've seen people who say, I'm relaxing, I'll play this, I'll play golf, I'll play football, I'll play rugby. And you feel that instead of relaxing, they yeah, are spending more energy. You're being strained. You're straining <laughs> yourself. And the earlier we start, the better. The earlier we start. So I find time to relax mm -hmm. with my family or, or alone, even with my colleagues, because like now, it is towards the end of the year. We have an end of year party. We'll go somewhere, relax, <clears throat> shed off, play games, and we call it a year. That's so thanks for that. No, I remind no. ourselves, let's free time for relaxing. That bucket of relaxation, please focus mm. on it and get it well. Aria, mm. you said about something before. We are going to wrap up soon. You, you said something about... Um, uh, being a straightforward, transparent person. And I want to go back to that because you've been here in the United States. You've attended leadership seminars here at Harvard. Mm. You've seen corruption officials in every country you've gone to. Mm. People mm. tend to think that every government official in Uganda mm. and those mm. who lead the organization, every Ugandan mm. is corrupt. And I am glad to have you on record saying your transparency goes first, but also for young people who we send all the time, go buy me water to drink. And they come back and think, oh, since Jackson lives in the USA, well, this PhD, <laughs> or he doesn't need his change. These <laughs> are the nuggets that we yes, put sure. hold on. So thank you for saying that. If you were to give yourself, this is our last question as we wrap up. Mm. If you were to give yourself advice when you were 18, what advice would you have given yourself, knowing what you know now? <laughs> <laughs> what a difficult question. A anyway, uh, just to take it back from why you stopped, I must say that uh, uh, corruption has been overrated. Mm. <laughs> and most of the cases may be even perceived corruption, but the few corrupt cases, corruption cases, have diluted the good image that That's everyone true. has. Mm -hmm. And I must say that not everyone is corrupt. I speak for myself here. It is on record. And being a lawyer, I know what is uh, document, do, 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 documented evidence yes. or documentary evidence. Under oath. <laughs> I have never stolen. Amen. I don't intend to steal. Yes. Whatever I have done is yeah. my effort. And I I also feel so offended every time they say government officials. That's You're true. in your house, you've worked so well, you've I I I I 
I get myself a good can. Somebody just throws a statement. Hey, you two are working with government, no wonder. Not every person, whether you're in government or private sector, yes. is corrupt. There are so many. Yes. You will find that 80% of the people in Uganda are clear, and maybe the 20% that are corrupt are the ones that yes. are bringing the image. And we pray against corruption. So uh, please, we have made our money. We are okay. We have never stolen anyone's money. Thank you. Um, back, back, uh, tell, uh, myself at 18 years, th there's a lot that um, uh, one is uh, to be myself. I've, I've been myself. I've been real. Uh, to live within my means that I don't have to see Jackson and admire him. Many people have a lot of baggage. And many, you may not know even their source of income. So if I start admiring your Range Rover yes, and putting my spouse under pressure or myself under pressure to get it, when I don't know your source or how you made it, yeah, it would be very yeah. unfair. But also, if you start competing with me, Jackson, and you don't know where I have gotten my wealth, then you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Exactly. And so living within my means, which I have done, but also uh, about relationships uh, and marriage. There mm. are things that they never tell us about relationships. Ooh, yep. And oh, there are things they never tell us about marriage. But I must say that <clears throat> marriage is about two people, mm. about two individuals that at the end of the day, lock themselves in one room and in one bed and will know what happens and how they feel. Absolutely. So I never engage myself in people's relationships. That even when, if you came to ask for advice or tell me about, I would say, you know what? It is between you people. I can generally give advice on relationships, patience, because many people are not patient. Mm. If we had been patient, maybe we'd see better things. Many people ex have too much expectation. If we had managed the expectations, maybe it would be somewhere good in our relationship. Yes. Um, uh, there's also peer pressure. The, the pressure that surrounds us, you're comparing this with this. Uh, we should appreciate that uh, even actually the Bible, honor. Uh, the, uh, let me tell you, my brother, you may have the best job, you may have as a woman, maybe as a man, you may have the best house, you may have, but you need relationships. That's true. It is part of humanity. So at the end of the day, as humans, when we know that whatever God set there, especially honoring our spouses, you loving us, husbands love, should love the, their wives, I, yes. marriages would be in a better space. That's and true. so I would, I would advise marriage to take it slow, take it easy. Where you feel that you're under too much pressure, you can first take a break. But where, where there's uh, this risk of uh, death, that's when you can really, really have your issues resolved. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe that marriage is like a road. It has bumps, it has humps, it has potholes. At the end of the day, you'll get to that destination. And so as an 18-year-old, I would advise marriage to be patient with themselves without hurting one another. But sometimes you also open the news and you see couples that have hurt one another and they ask themselves why, and people ask themselves, why didn't this give themselves a break to cool down? Maybe you call it the cooling period, the cooling period. Maybe lastly, the 18 year old me, I, I, I think one, one thing is that, um, because of the background that I've talked about and the value system, mm. I would encourage all 18, have a value system. Because especially based on godly principles, if mm. you are Christian, you know the Bible, yes. the godly principles. If you are Muslim, you know the, 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 the Quran. Mm. If you don't have those pillars, the principles in life that give the values, you crash any time. Because the world has a lot of waves. The world has a lot of wave. It will bring this wave mm. of a business gone bad. If you don't have strong values, you will collapse. Mm. A relationship gone bad 
things will happen. Things are not straightforward. And to the young people, as I conclude, mm. I know I cast so many young people, I mentor many, my, many young people. And academically, you find them saying, oh, this subject is hard, or I can't handle this, I can't complete my studies. And I always tell them, Jackson, there's nothing that is simple out there. Nothing, yes. There's nothing that is simple. I say, even when you go through this stage of education, getting a job is another hard task. You walk on the streets, you make 100 applications until you get a reply. Then when you get a job, you may get a boss that may not understand. <laughs> you, The job will also wave, you know, swing you around. Yes. And when you get married... Oh my God, that's another tall order. So when you go in business, so there, tell me any space where life is 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 easy. Uh, it is never easy, but as long as you have the determination, the focus, the patience, and resilience, but also the belief in God, you will make it. So nothing comes easy. They say easy come easy go. Nothing in life comes easy. You have to work hard. You have to work smart. And as long as you have the values and the principles that guide you and the protocols, as you set your strategic plan, as you set your, your 10 year plan as an individual five year plan, everything will be aligned because the subconscious mind supports the cautious mind. Always, oh, yep. Wow, you've said it so well, you put it so bluntly and so simple. We've promised everybody you will come here, learn, and learn and relearn. Thank you, Masi, for sparing. You're welcome, my brother. For those mm -hmm. who don't know, Masi as also as a lawyer, an intellectual property lawyer, and a registrar general, she marries people. So those of you who are in relationships and need to get married. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, civil, registr civil marriages. We conduct civil marriages at Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Among yeah. many things. Among yeah. many things. My fellow Rotarian, yes. I know, I promised to you less than an hour. We passed an hour. Thank you so much for sparing time. You can say any closing word you want to say, and we will conclude this. I won't add anything. Thank you, everybody. Please share, subscribe, and continue to learn. We can learn together. Thank you very much, my brother, Jackson. And I want to, again, appreciate you for uh, this opportunity to share uh, my life story as well as uh, my career, my family, and uh, all the uh, areas of uh, influence that I've shared. I really would like to uh, encourage uh, all the uh, observe all the uh, people listening in and and watching to 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 continue to do their best as they enhance. Uh, 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 each and every uh, area of influence as they heighten their success uh, and through um, uh, discipline, through uh, the value systems, uh, hard work and focus and living uh, as a good example, uh, having a good reputation because you're not living your life for you only. You're living your life also for your children your children's children, your children's children for the generation. So at the end of the day, you look at the fifth generation after you, will you will they be proud of the kind of great great grandparent that you were? Will you even leave a mark? Will 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 they be proud of associating with you? Or they'll be breaking curses that you started and all the sins that you committed. So let us uh, support one another and this in this world we need each other. Uh, uh, though you don't need everybody, you need each other, but you don't, uh, 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 you have to also be selective because the world is full of evil and we are raising children in the area, in the, in the, re in the environment of evil. We have to guide them. Our role as parents, if there's any biggest position now and the most responsible position, it's not the position of being CEO, it's not the position of being a director in an entity, it's not the position of being a manager, it is that position of being a parent, biological or non-biological. We as parents have a role to play to raise our children, not only our biological children, but also mentor as many children as we raise, as we see, as we supervise, as we associate with. That's another order that we need to follow to build a, a greater 
Hungry Generation. Thank you very much, uh, my brother Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you and bless, God bless you too. You are welcome. Thank you.